so I guess welcome to My Roommate Abandoned Me, episode one. <sighs> How do you even start like a vlog like this? Or a video? I won't be a full vlog, let's be real. Um well if you're looking if you actually looked at the title, which I'm sure you did because by the way I clicked on it. I am currently in a state of I don't know if my roommate's gonna up and leave. Because basically what's going on is for the past year she's been dating someone new, which is someone I've known since elementary school, and they're a great person. However, due to just life in general and the pandemic and everything, the roommate had become very reliant on that specific person for like their personal happiness and to have something to do and have a reason to live. Basically, like, it's like if they don't have this person, nothing is good for them. And they've slowly started to like push away our mutual friends, or they're really weird about it, or um, they just like remember, we just doesn't know how to interact with us anymore. And last night, at least at the time of recording this last night, we both blew up at each other. Um, so like for the last few months, like I'm a neat freak. Like I want things clean, especially in like the common areas. If you want to like keep your room messy or it's just messy by default, like that's fine. That's your personal space. You handle how you want to handle it. But in the common area, it should be clean. Pick up after yourself. And I am guilty of like cleaning up when they're not home because my mind is just like clean up it's disgusting i don't want to sit here and like use the living room and have like trash everywhere or have dishes somewhere or have like um a bunch of art supplies out scattered over the place you know and if i tried and just knowing how i read is if i were to bring this up if i don't do it the right way they will blow up and they will be like, oh, will you do this, and you do that, and you do this, and like during our argument, mind you, there was like a third person here during that who was completely like in the middle, like uh, I could see both sides and that sucks. But essentially, um, when I was like, you are basically obsessed with your boyfriend. You are obsessed with them. You are relying on them. You make every all your plans around them and the reason why no one makes plans with you is because you always like i have to be back by this time i gotta be back for this person at this time and it's like but you don't tell them until it's too late into the process or you know someone's going to be out doing something all day and you're like well i don't want to do that all day but then you go with them anyways so you know what's gonna happen you know how this works and you choose to do it and then you complain and act like a baby about it and I also mentioned like how they don't clean the apartment anymore, at least the common spaces, and they haven't in months, and the result was, well, you follow me around and clean up after me. And it's like, yeah, because you're not cleaning. And then they're like, oh, well, it's because you work from home, so you have too much time. And it's like, but you're unemployed right now because you got laid off. You've been unemployed for two months, so you have plenty of time all day to clean and to pick up after yourself, but you sit on the couch and you don't do anything, you just watch YouTube all day. Or you make art and then overcharge for it. Like yeah, art is time consuming, but if you're just making random things and hoping someone buys them and then charging like two times the price of someone else for the same basic thing, that's, you're literally just trying to profit off of generic stuff that's not cool, you know? And then, you know, Sorry, like I'm holding a tripod, so you know, good times. It's like I get wanting to not have a regular one to you know live off your art or do YouTube or Twitch or whatever. It's, but the point is, like, if you don't have a plan, it's a problem. And now we're at this point where I don't know if they're gonna move out. I'm assuming they are, which is not good because I can't afford this place by myself. I don't know when to move in. I'm probably gonna have to take out like a loan, my 401k, and figure things out. I'm probably gonna borrow from my credit card because I can do like a borrow type thing, like a balance transfer, but they'll give me cash instead. Um, which I can take just enough to finish this rest of this year off rent wise, and then I can pay it off with my bonus from work in January. So, like, you know, that's handled up till January. And then in January, I can figure out if I need to like do a 401k borrow. But it's just so stressful because this person, my roommate, like, won't take responsibility for themselves, and it's never their fault for anything. 
and they deflect everything and like even during the argument when i was like bringing up examples of what they do that makes it very clear that they aren't thinking about others they're like well you did this and it's like this isn't about me it's about you you know if there's a problem that i'm creating you need to let me know but instead you don't let me know and they're like well you don't let me know and it's like because the problem is you don't clean so i'm just i clean by default and i've just been dealing with that which obviously isn't the best way to handle things but it's like if the simple solution is i just clean whatever but what started this argument last night was that i got rid of a box for something they just bought because they just left the box in the living room um and they tend my roommate tends to leave stuff all over the place trash recyclable stuff so by default i pick it up and get rid of it and it happened to be recycling day so it's already gone it's out of the house and mind you this box sat in the living room for two days untouched not even talked about mentioned nothing so it's like, okay, you're just being lazy like usual. So I got rid of it. And they're like, well, that was an important box. I was like, if it was so important, why did you just leave in the living room? And their response was, well, you should have asked me if it was important. And it's like, I shouldn't have to ask you if an empty box is important when you leave empty boxes all over the place all the time. And they're like, well, you moved my dye stuff from the kitchen. Mind you, this happened literally the last year. And it's like, yeah, I moved it because you aren't using it. And it's in my storage container that I didn't say you could use. You know, so I'll go back to like, you're using my stuff that I didn't say you could use. So yeah, I'm gonna take it out and put it some results. I put it in our, our utility room, like our closet, which has like a washer that has our shelves and stuff. You've seen it on the blog. On the blog, I've got videos I've made about it. But the point is I put it somewhere where it can still be reached and it's out of way because like most containers I have which are in our kitchen are for like everyday items like hand towels, washcloths, like for the sink stuff, sponges. Um, I put like my um, keys and sunglasses in them for when I'm leaving the house. So it's like hair dye stuff doesn't belong there. Also it's mine. So I get to decide what goes in there. And then they're like, well, you keep like taking down my stuff and, and, and shoving it away. And it's like, and they brought up a tapestry from last year that was in the office. Like I'll show you. It was on this wall. So it was hold, held in by thumbtacks, and this is paneling, and I don't believe it's even real wood paneling, I think it's just like, you know, the, the weird, like, boarding, like MDF or something, but it kept falling out because it's being held in by tacks. So at one point, I stopped trying to put it back up, and I just folded up and left it on their desk. And they said that me leaving it on their desk folded up is me showing that I don't want their stuff to be displayed. And it's like... It kept falling down. It's not my responsibility to take care of it. And then they brought up how, like, well, I have anxiety and, and you need to handle me a certain way. And it's like, oh, mm -mm -mm. do not throw your mental illness or some kind of mental problem you have as a crutch and ask for pity. Because my roommate will not go to therapy. My roommate will not go to the doctor. My roommate will not go to the dentist. Like, yeah, this shit's expensive, but you won't help yourself. It's not my job to manage your anxiety. It is your job to manage your anxiety. You know, if you're having a bad day, you're having a panic attack, like, yeah, I'm gonna be there to, to comfort you and make sure you're okay, but it's not my job to be like, oh, well, they have anxiety, so I gotta make sure I don't trigger them because they won't go see a doctor. It's like, you literally, won't use it as a crutch to make people feel bad for you they even admit like i bribe people to do things for me because they won't do it otherwise and it's like you realize how you're sounding right now um so i'm pretty sure they're gonna move out within the next month because we just blew up and they're like i promised i'd never leave you financially screwed and it's like well you're about to do it so that's a load of horse bull and it's just like, and then our mutual friend who was here during it, she messaged me last night and she was just like, dude, I'm so sorry this happened. Like, you know, I don't want to get in the middle, but honestly, I see what you're talking about. And it's like, it's hard because our mutual friend has been through a lot in their life. And our and my roommate has been there for them the whole time. But then on the side thing, I never brought up that like, our roommate talks shit about that mutual friend every single day telling them that they're saying about how like they're a bad mother and how you know they are being stupid and they don't listen and like you know they're just being you know thrown around and beat up by their family and it's like and yet you're here like you need to, you need to baby me and it's like okay so you're talking crap about our mutual friend who we've who i've known since kindergarten knowing you've known since high school so it's just like it's it's terrible 
but that mutual friend was like, I'll be honest, she, the roommate's probably gonna move out. And it's like, I already expected that. And and I brought that up because they're like, well, I should just move out. I was like, then friggin' do it. I've been planning how to handle myself for months. And they're like, I, ha, ha, I knew you were up to something. So me being up to something means preparing that you're gonna screw me over? I just, I don't understand this logic. I really don't. And I'm really scared because like, I'm obviously gonna have to find a side job to make just enough money to cover rent and it's hard because I work 8 to 4.30, so I have to find a job that's like maybe 5 to 10 or 5 to 10.30 or something. Like, something to do with like an evening position where I could still be in bed by like 11.30ish to get up for 7 for work. You know, like I'm always going to be tired and it's going to suck, but it's what I'm going to have to do. You know, I'm still going to make YouTube videos. I still want to try Twitch, but that's going to be really difficult if I'm like working two jobs. So I don't know what's going to happen. You know, I might try to make enough money that I can, you know, pay rent and then try to find a roommate. Because I'm sure my landlord would be like, yeah, we can totally sign a lease for, like, adding a roommate or something as long as it's, you know, they do an application. I don't think my roommate, my landlord would really care if, like, can I bring in a roommate, you know? They just have to meet, obviously. Um, but I'll, I'll have to figure it out. And it sucks. It really does. So, I'm gonna just, I don't... It's like, it's so scary to be an adult and be like, ugh. Like, I'll be honest, right now I'll be okay that like my student, like student loans are on pause and that's what's gonna save me right now. But once student loans restart in February, I am screwed. Like if I don't have a side job at that point, I am screwed. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be hard. Cause basically I'm gonna have to save money. Cause basically I'll have to use my my student loan payment to pay off any money I borrow or put payments towards money I borrow that way um, when we get to like my bonus in January and taxes in February and March and stuff whenever those put in my account like I can you know use that money to um, you know pay what's remaining and then also have money for like future months so it's it's gonna be it's gonna be hard we're gonna figure it out and there'll probably be a lot more videos like this, so... I guess, welcome to My Roommate Abandoned Me, episode one. Not something I ever thought I'd make. And you know what? I have clips, I made a video, a very short video. Well, it's like 10 minutes, but I made a video showing off all the stuff my roommate just leaves behind, and it's just like, I might put, air that, I don't know. We'll see, because if we have an episode two, that's going up. So I'm going to go have a, a, probably a mental breakdown, and um, I hopefully will see you guys soon. See ya.